Hang on, I'm going live. Morning, Australia. Karen Brewer here. Cops just turned up at the gate and they've jumped over. Hi, Lisa. They're coming down the gate. They're the gate. Yep, they're coming down the gate now. I'm not opening the door, but I'll talk to them through the door. Well, we'll just wait and see, but we'll just leave the door locked at this stage. Happy to talk to him through the window. Can I help you? Yeah. Sorry, can you come come and identify yourselves, please? No, I, I'm happy to talk to you here. How can I help you? Who are you and what station are you from? Um, I'm from Kaikui Police Station. Right? Yeah. In your name? Can you please just come speak to us the I'm happy to talk to you here right now. So how can I help you and what's what's your name? What's your name? You're on my property. Crossed a trespass sign as well, by the way. No, that's Matt King's son. That's Matt King's son, is it? Okay. Hi. Hi, is there something wrong with your colleague or uh, nope. has a problem identifying yourself? Or? No, we don't have any problem identifying ourselves. Okay, well, what's the issue? Of course, naturally. You don't. You don't want to tell the world your names. So I'm gathering. Um, you're the one putting anti um, posts all over Facebook about anti COVID. Uh, no, I specialise in exposing the pedophile network of filth in Australian politics, in relation to the Woods Royal Commission and the cover up of suppression orders that involves Premier Bob Carr, Mark Latham. <laughs> Um, James Rowland Wood, the Commissioner, in relation to Senator Bill Heffernan's speech of the 20th of October 2015 in the Federal Parliament. Yep. And I'm happy to talk to you more about that if you like. Okay, what would you like to know? Well, I just want to know more in depth of what you've been posting and things like that. Okay. Senator Bill Heffernan, this Australian senator, gave a speech in 2015 in the Federal Parliament with relation to the cover-up of the Woods Royal Commission. Right? He gave his very first, first speech on that topic in the Federal Parliament in 2002. Prior to that, New South Wales politician Franca Arena exposed the network of Freemason filth that was, in fact, running the New Zealand uh, sorry, the uh, New South Wales judiciary at the time. Judge David Yeldham was outed during that speech of Franco Arenas and he promptly suicided himself not long after that. Um, I, could, I could talk about this for hours. Franco Arena gave a, gave a series of speeches exposing the Freemason Demo Lake connection every politician in Australia shares and the cover-up that was, in fact, the Woods Royal Commission. We'll move forward to an uh, MP by the name of Alistair Webster, who was the former federal member for, for Macquarie in New South Wales. Prior to that, he was, in fact, the superintendent of Durrick Boys Home, which was, in fact, the boys home which was peddling boys to the judiciary for the purpose of pedophilia, child rape and a myriad of other abuses. Well, that is, in fact, what I do. Expose that network of filth. Yeah. So, what have you been posting around COVID, though? That's what I want to know. I don't post anything around COVID. I specialise in exposing the pedophilia. Okay. So, is there anything you've been posting around the COVID stuff, around 
um, breaching COVID or um, asking other people to breach COVID? I never have. Do we no, have... I have not. Do we? Do we? We don't even have a lockdown here. Pardon? We don't even have a lockdown here. No. No. no we, we are still... uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is actually Matt, Ki Matt King's son. Yeah, that Matt... There is... Oh, that's Matt King's yeah. son, is it? Okay. Matt King's a uh, New Zealand politician for Northland, yeah, sure. and he didn't want to identify himself on arrival, which is really odd. Anyway, I'm sorry, what was your name? Constable Ross, nice to meet you. Does it bother you, incest and pedophilia, Constable Ross? Do you think that's wrong? That's not what he's here to talk about the law. Sorry? We are here to enforce the law. Yeah. If we come across that sort of scenario, we do take action. And right. Well, in that case, would it be possible for the New Zealand police to um, file some sort of complaint with Interpol with regards to the cover-up in the judiciary that is, that is Australian politics? Possibly, but that's out of my jurisdiction. I'm a constable, I'm a frontline officer, and I'm here to take care of what's um, available to us when we arrive. Mm -hmm. Okay? Something like that needs to go to CIB. So the best thing to do would be to go into the police station and talk to them about it. Okay. okay? Might be something, it might be something worth exploring. Yep. No because I believe every normal... Australian and hopefully New Zealander knows that incest and pedophilia are wrong. Yep. That's what I believe. Okay. Well, anyway, um, it's interesting you don't have an opinion on incest and pedophilia, though. I do have an opinion. And what would that be? Well, I don't believe in it either, but... Okay, I'm good to know. Uh, go on death it. It's not up to me to say how other people do things and how other people feel. Oh, I think it's up to everybody to say about incest and pedophilia being wrong. So, sounds like... Um, so mm. I'll leave you to it. Nice to meet Constable Ross. Just just for the record, COVID is a hoax. I, I it's it's ki it's killed seventeen people. Right? Do you know how many people have suicided in Victoria? In New Zealand. Yeah, in New Zealand. We have we have more people. over the last couple of months. Do you actually know? Are you okay with that? No, but we also need to deal with what we can. And um, if you believe COVID is a hoax, that's entirely up to you. But we're not allowed to voice that, is that right? Yeah, I'd like to keep my family members safe, so I'm going to... Oh, just your family members, so not so much everyone else's. In my career, um, but I believe entirely that it's true. Um, it's the facts I'm given. So I'll leave you with that thought. Yeah, you too. Bye. There you go, Australia. I'm going to go and make a cup of now, guys. I'll be back with you shortly. Bye, folks. Actually, no, there is a couple of things. There is a couple of things I'm going to say right now. Okay. Australia, when I embarked on this journey of exposing this network of filth, I knew what I was doing was very dangerous. I also knew that the police, no matter which state in Australia, is involved in this network of filth. I knew that. And so I took the steps that were in my power to do so, to place myself in an area that was hopefully safer than Australia because the, the corruption and the filthy Freemason network that is in fact our judiciary across Australia should alarm every Australian. If I had have been doing this work in Australia, <clears throat> I can assure you I would have disappeared before anyone even knew about Senator Bill Heffernan's speech. And so I put myself in a remote location so that I didn't have any police officers smashing down my door <laughs> in the middle of the night, you know. I mean, you've seen what they do. You've seen it happen to James. You've seen it happen to Fanos and Craig Cole. You've seen it happen to... I mean, do I need to go on and on? And the fact of the matter is people do, in fact, disappear that expose tend to expose this network. Um, um, I'll talk to talk about uh, the Huckstep murder in Central in uh, Centennial Park. I could talk about that. 
I could talk about <clears throat> the lady in Brisbane who used to run the brothel that uh, was murdered. Actually, I just can't think of her name right now. But um, Sally Ann Huckstep in the in Centennial Park. Um, I could go on and on about the people that have been murdered. I go on a lot about the bravery of Senator Bill Heffernan and Franca Arena because I can tell you they have, in fact, had threats to their lives, to the lives of their families and whatever. And what saved them, what saved them was the fact that they were known, you know, yeah, the fact that they were known. And, of course, I wasn't known when I embarked on this journey and that my most dangerous time was actually when I first started to speak and before I got a following. And I know I would have come to the attention of the Freemason de Molay movement well before becoming known had I um, still been in Australia. I would have just disappeared off the radar, just been another unknown murder like Lee Lee at Stockton Beach. Lee Lee at Stockton Beach was a de Molay murder. That's right, that's what it was. They have the children offend on other children. You know, like Carlotta's story that I told you about last night where she was in an orphanage and she was attacked by an altar boy. Do you know how many of our politicians have been altar boys, Australia? <laughs> you elect these people to make decisions over your lives and you know nothing about them. And that has to stop. That really has to stop. Anyway, there you go. And I think by now, every Australian knows there's something really wrong with our police service. And they are Freemason Demolais. Programmed, bred and cloistered inside this network. Freemason Demolay insiders from Freemason Demolay families educated at Freemason Demolay schools. They are your judiciary, your police service. They are, in fact, the bureaucracies organising your education systems. And when you break it all down, it comes down to a couple of, uh, uh, you know, about 50, 50 60,000 worth of them making the decisions entirely for, two and, for 25 and a half million people. And Australians are still wandering around blind. And to those of you, I hope you all have enough brains to know why I placed myself in New Zealand to get the job done. I do what I do because there's a job to be done. We walk today, Australia. Bye, folks.